what's up y'all i know it has been a while what's going on what's new how you look that was my daughter's dress i just threw <laughs> i'm tired y'all i know it's been a while i got a lot of catching up to do but i'm gonna just get right into it and i'm gonna catch up and y'all know i'll be on it or whatever i need to get my life i really do like right now, I am dead tired, but I'm going to try and get through this review so I can move on to the next one. And if I don't have the next one uploaded, you know that I'm going to get it together, um, at least in time for the new episodes or whatever. So anyways, get into it. Love and Hip Hop Season 5, Episode 14. So it starts off with where it left off with um, life giving Carly a ring. She faints. He reveals that it's a promise ring, and it's a promise that she's never going to find another dude like him. And he dumps her, and he says that she can keep the ring, but she can't keep him. I was like, this is definitely history repeating itself. Like, what is up with all of these dudes doing these half Indian giving proposals <laughs> to Carly? Like, she just, I guess she's just not worthy of a ring. So he said he feels like, he said that, um... He was going to propose to Carly, but he got text messages from Scrap basically explaining, you know, I guess the, um, like explaining their relationship and how they were hanging out. And he's like, he feels like Carly is not the type of chick that would set examples for their children if they would have had any. Um, she's not the type of chick who is like, um, you know, wifey material. And Carly got offended. And she's like, so you can go out on dates, but you don't expect for me to date? He was like, I, it's not about you dating. It's about you being up front, and you lied to me from the get-go. And she's like, well, it's a double standard when it comes to men. First of all, here's the thing. At least with life, life was up front about him dating chicks. You was going behind his back talking to Scrap, and Scrap still outed you. You sitting up here talking about how loyal you are to Scrap, how you go to visit him, how you do this, that, and the third. But here it is, Scrap is texting this dude telling him what y'all are doing. So you played yourself, and you never once told life that you were seeing Scrap. You told, you basically told life, um... You basically had life believing that y'all were a couple and you were committed to him. Not that you going around messing with the next dude because life stopped giving you attention. Like, I'm like, Carly is just, Carly is very attention starving. She's the type of person who, whoever's not giving her attention at that moment, she got to find attention from somewhere. So... She's like, you know what, no matter, she's like, I should have seen this coming. No matter what I do for a dude, I'm never good enough. And I'm like, well, Carly, you kind of did it to yourself. So now we get to D. Smith and Arian, and Arian is meeting up with D. Smith just to talk about tracks and whatnot. But D. Smith has her own little um hidden agenda, and she has, oh, my head itches. <laughs> she has a, um, a vocal coach for Arian. Because she's like, she doesn't mind working with Arian, but she just wants to see how Arian's voice is and what they can work with. So Arian was like, well, I wasn't expected. Yeah. <laughs> Arian is like, well, I wasn't expecting to for no audition, you know, to audition today. I was just expecting for us to listen to some tracks and see what we could work with. So the vocal coach did like a scale and he wanted Arian to follow Arian followed. She was a little bit off key. wasn't She wasn't terrible, but she wasn't great either. So, you know, D. Smith is like, whoa, we got a lot of work to do. So, you know, D. Smith is basically like, you know, we have a lot of work to do. We have to, you know, find your sound, see what works for you. You do need vocal lessons. And, you know, Arian felt a little bit offended. And she was upset because she felt like D. Smith... You know, she said that she's still developing herself as an artist. But D. Smith is like, okay, so you expect for somebody to just hold your hand and baby you and not tell you the God honest truth about, you know, how you are as an artist. She's like, no, it's not that. But I wasn't expecting to come here for a vocal lesson. She's like, well, this is a part of the industry. And this was this is what it is. And this is the one time, because y'all know I do not like D. Smith. This is the one time I have to agree with D. Smith because the industry is very cutthroat. They will tell you straight up, oh, you need to lose weight. Oh, you need to get surgery. Oh, you need to do this. You need to do that. They will tell you straight up to change. Like, they knock down your, your self-esteem just to mm, not really build it back up, but build it up into how they want you to look. <laughs> 
So what D Smith was saying, I don't feel like it was bad. I feel like it was what she needed to hear. But Arian is going to get upset and run away. And I'm like, well, what are you running away for? She's just telling you the truth. Like, you need help. You need practice. You can't just decide to come in one day and step into a studio and bam, you're a singer. That's not how it works. So Arian was hurt by D Smith's comments and she walked away. And D Smith was like, okay, well, whatever. Now we get to Mama D and this dag on song she recording this song with jock called in that order that song had me in tears i'm sitting up here watching the daggone scene like this lady is bonkers so anyway while she's in the studio jay nicks arrived and jock is saying that he wants to speak to jay nicks man to man about the whole amber situation so you know mama d leaves the studio him and Jay Nick's talking, you know, Jock is like, you know, man to man, I'm just letting you know, you know, me and Amber had a thing. And Jay Nix is like, you supposed to be my man? Yeah, you smashing my girl? You supposed to be my dog? And then next thing you know, he was like, my dog. And I'm like, oh, you know, Jay Nix is like, I don't even care because at this point I needed an exit strategy with Amber because Amber is, you know, real life, you know, she's disrespectful and I wanted to break up with her anyway. So... He's just basically, he's basically happy with the fact that now he has an exit strategy and now he can um pursue Tierra because he really likes Tierra. And you know what? I honestly feel like Tierra and Jay Nix make a cute couple. They make a cute couple to me. So, you know, he wasn't really mad at Jock. It is what it is. And Amber is very thirsty, very disrespectful. So, you know, Jay Nix, I don't, he wasn't really bothered by it. You know, basically, like Chris Brown said, these hoes ain't loyal. You know, it is what it is. So now we get to Tammy and Bambi. And Tammy's getting things together for her fashion show. And she's discussing the state of her marriage. And she's basically saying that her and Waka decided to separate because, you know, things aren't right. She's depressed in the house. She really wants to move. But the sad thing about moving is that she feels like she's breaking up a family because, you know, even though Waka's, um, I mean, sorry, Tammy's daughter is not Waka's biological child. He has been, you know, raising her as his own. So, you know, Tammy feels like it's hard to explain to Charlie about what's going on. And she's afraid that she's breaking up a family. And it's like, you know, it's understandable. But sometimes you have to do what you have to do for your sanity. Even if it hurts people involved. Like, sometimes you have to be a little bit selfish and do what you got to do for your sanity. Because nobody's going to help you stay sane but you. So, now we get to K. Michelle. And she's practicing her um mindful song. Oh, my God. I love mindful. That is my song. So, First of all, she had she shading everybody in Atlanta talking about how everybody in Atlanta is talking about, oh, I'm a star, I'm a star. But where did your songs chart? She was talking about Betty Idol, D Smith, and all these people who stay being in the studio, but they don't have an album. They don't have no single that has not left Atlanta. And I'm like, hey, Michelle, K. Michelle got the right to brag because this girl done been on tour. She done been around the world. <laughs> Excuse me, she done lived in L.A., she done lived in New York, she back in Atlanta, she done lived everywhere. None of them other chicks can say that. <laughs> they could say they've been around the world, but they have not had the level of success that K. Michelle has had. So anyway, Arian arrives, basically wanting advice. And K. Michelle was like, you know, well, I've heard Arian sing for me before, and I would not want her on no stage with me. But as a friend, she did say that she would have Arian shadow her, basically follow her around and see how the industry is and how everything goes. So Arian decided to do that. It was, you know, it was a good idea, you know, just to get um like a first hand glimpse of how everything is ran. Which I thought it was sweet of K Michelle to do. My kids are downstairs making mad noise, so that's who you'll probably hear and they'll probably be running up here in a minute. <laughs> but I'ma try and continue without them distracting me. Um, so we get to, wait, let me move this, I'm trying to move, okay, we get to Jocelyn and Stevie, and they're still in LA for the Grammys, they're having a Grammy pool party, Miss Nikki Baby and Fizz is dead, yo, 
Y'all know I love Nikki, right? Y'all know I love Miss Nikki, baby, right? Like, she is sexy. <laughs> like, she, that's a beautiful girl. Plastic surgery and all. I don't care. Talk about her plastic surgery. I don't care. She is beautiful. She had a good surgeon. Let's keep it 100. Nikki got a good surgeon. Whoever her surgeon is, he perfect. Because Nikki got a good surgeon. So, they hanging out and... Um, you know, Stevie being petty invited Dom and Carly, knowing that they messy. And I think um, Dom invited Tierra. So, you know, Carly arrives and Tierra is there. And um, Carly basically tells Dom about the whole ring thing and about how life dumped her. And, you know, Dom is like, well, I could buy another heart, but did you keep the ring? She's like, yeah, I got the ring. She's like, well, we gonna find out if it's real. And I'm like, I bet you that ring ain't real because ain't no dude gonna leave you with no real ring. You know, he ain't gonna leave you with no real ring and just let you pawn it and do what you want. That First of all, that ring look fake as I don't know what. But anyway, so while they sit in there, Carly decides to tell Tierra about her relationship with Scrap. And at first, Tierra is like, you mean Lil Scrappy? She like, no, your baby daddy. So, Tierra feels disrespected. And she's like, you know what? I don't care about who Scrap deals with. I don't care about who Carly deals with. Carly is thirsty anyway. She 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 hops on anything that's moving. So she could have my leftovers because I'm done. So her and Tierra go back and forth. Carly storms off, gets in the car, and leaves. And then here come Dom. These girls have no class at a pool party fighting. But then she's over it. She gets up and she starts a fight an argument with Jocelyn. Now, she throwing mad shade and she like, oh, they up there looking down on us and then her, um, and then the help is up there with her. She talking about Dawn because Dawn was there too. So, Dom basically is like, um, you know, what's up, Jocelyn, Hernandez, you know, Chanelica. And Jocelyn is like, oh, you having a fun time being around my husband? She said, but y'all ain't married, though. So she's like, I see you up there with the help. And Dom, Dawn is like, oh, I'm the help. And she's like, yeah, because you was the one flapping your gums talking about they wasn't married. So Dom is basically going off or whatever, trying to fight. And Jocelyn is unbothered, like to the point where she got in the pool and started twerking. And Dom is still sitting up here trying to do football turns and, you know, Heisman moves and all of that stuff. Jocelyn is unbothered and she gets in the pool, her and Nikki, Stevie and one of them drunk a drink off of their butts and they just continued to, I'm like, this was a hot mess. And I'm like, Dom... Dom this season, she is very, very, it seems to me like she's very, she putting on for a storyline. Because you sit up here, it's like you arguing with somebody and you got to constantly talk about, you have to constantly let the cameras know, oh, I'm that bitch. I'm that bitch. Okay, obviously you're not because you're making a fool of yourself and you look stupid. Like Dom is acting real thirsty this season and it's very annoying. It's annoying me every week. She arguing with somebody or picking a fight with somebody. And then at the end of the argument, she got to remind herself, I'm that bitch. I'm okay. That's great. But you look stupid. So moving on, we get to Mimi and Tierra, and they are riding back. I think from LA to Atlanta. They're on their way to Atlanta. Um they just got off the plane. So they're discussing Jocelyn and Stevie and Tierra is telling her about the whole pool party because Mimi missed it because Mimi had her own stuff going on. But she says she glad she missed it because it was a mess from what she heard. So um Mimi is telling Tierra that um she that Stevie doesn't pay child support but she's kinda thinking about putting him on child support. So um Tierra is like, he don't pay child support? Mimi, you got to get it together. So, um, you know, like I said, Mimi is considering it, but she's not too sure. So she did reveal that she's seeing another woman, and she hasn't told her ex-girlfriend, Chris, about who she's seeing. She said she didn't expect to fall. She didn't expect to end up in another relationship, but it just happened. Okay. But, um... So, you know, Tierra is like, well, you know, you got to tell Chris because you can you can only imagine how that conversation is going to go and how it's going to sound coming from somebody else's mouth rather than it's coming out of your mouth to Chris. And Mimi is thinking like, well, yeah, I do have to tell her. So now we get to K. Michelle and Arian and 
I think K Michelle was doing a show at Webster Hall or whatever. So she got like press and promos and um, you know, Arian is excited to be shadowing K Michelle and she just wants to work with someone who believes in her. So after the show, K Michelle is like hanging out in her car or whatever. And she's like, Listen, we gotta go. You know, I don't want people running up on the car and they do something crazy. So we gotta go. So she drives off and Arian comes out like right behind her. She's like, wait a minute, she left me? You know, we came here together. How's she just gonna leave me? So I guess Arian figured out a way to get back to their hotel or whatever. I did think that was a little bit grimy, but I understand why K. Michelle wanted to leave, but still that's your friend and you invited her to shadow you. So that was kind of wrong, but I mean, I guess, I don't know. So now we get to Amber's cosmetic line her party or whatever and jock is helping her and they're flirting back and forth first of all amber amber to me like ain't nothing excuse me i don't see anything special about her like she's like a regular degular schmegular you know cardi b <laughs> regular degular schmegular chick you know to me she just got big boobs and you know weave and a big butt like i don't know like she's just I don't see nothing great about her. So, um, Jock is helping her, but he basically is helping J. Nix, like, set her up to be ambushed or whatever. So, J. Nix arrives with Tierra and whatnot. And, you know, they arrive and Amber's like, why would you bring this bitch to my cosmetic line? He said, well, I'm supporting you, but I'm also letting you know I'm breaking up with you. So, she like, oh, you seeing her now? And I'm like, well, Amber, why would you care? You... You don't care about what he's doing, and he you don't care about your relationship with him. So, and then like out of nowhere, Tierra threw I think a clutch or something at her, and Amber tried to throw her makeup at her, and I'm like, yo, this is so unprofessional. And I'm like, you trying to have a cosmetic line, and you just taking lipsticks and polishes and all this other craziness and throwing it at people. Like that's not professional. Ain't nobody gonna want buy from you now. Don't nobody even know who you are. Anyway, <laughs> so. You know, basically, it was saying, like, um, one of them was saying that Jock, like, thirsty hoes or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, he does. Because he obviously ain't learned. He ain't learned from, well, I'm not going to say Kadia because Kadia wasn't thirsty. But he ain't learned from the whole Cena, Kadia, you know, situation, Carly and all of that. So, now we get to the last um, scene of the show, which was kind of sad because I could definitely relate with Tammy and um Bambi is in the show Bambi looked beautiful and I don't even really like Bambi like that but Bambi looked beautiful so Scrappy sees Bambi and he's like you know I, you know I may I might want another chance with the Bam you know I don't want nobody else the bachelor lifestyle was good and all but you know I really want to try with the Bam you know you know because she she held down Scrinae when I was Ben Nye and the Chris Nye, and I'm like, Scrappy, you lucky we understand what you mean when you say that. So, Deb arrives to the show, and Deb is like, um, that she was having a hard time, like, battling coming to the show, but she felt like she should because Tammy is still family to her. So, um... After the show, Rashida asks about Waka's whereabouts, and... You know, Tammy doesn't really want to dwell because this is her success. She feels successful. She feels happy. But she feels like she's about to break. And, you know, Rashida's like, listen, relationship goes in spurts. You know how my relationship was. You just have to do what you feel is right. And you have to be happy. So... The attention is kind of diverted to Bambi, and Scrappy gets Bambi flowers for support, and she says she's excited to see him, and she wants to rekindle Sting. Um, the guy she was dating, it didn't really work out. They were just having fun, but she's ready to move on. I will charge it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'll charge it when I get the chance. So, um... She just basically makes it clear that she doesn't want to play games anymore. And Scrappy basically wants to show and prove. You know, he wants to make, make it known that he loves her and he wants to be with her. So she gives him another chance, but she's on her terms. She's like, listen, we ain't playing games no more. You need to get it together. So um, now Deb comes backstage and she's proud of Tammy, but she knows that they need to talk. So finally they have their talk and she finally tells Deb that she's moving 
and she feels like this separation is causing a strain between her and Waka, but Waka convinced her to go, and Deb is not ready for any of this. She's not ready for the breakup. She's not ready for the separation, and she breaks down, and her breaking down, Tammy starts breaking down, and then it basically ended there. Well, you were just downstairs, so you have to wait, Nyla. So, you know, they cry, and it basically ends there. Now, this scene made me sad because it's like, at least Tammy has a mother-in-law that cares this much, you know, that really wants them to work out. It's kind of harder when, in the relationship, you have, like, mother-in-laws, you have in-laws who really don't like you or care about you like that. That's kind of the situation that I'm in. But it's like, it is what it is. But I, I feel for Tammy and I feel for Deb because it is like they are one big happy family. But, you know, a separation maybe needs to happen. Like, a separation doesn't always mean it's the end. A separation could just be a break so that the two individuals that's involved can get themselves together and figure out what they want to do, you know, if they should be together. Separation doesn't always mean automatically divorce, you know, and that's what people get it misconstrued that when you separate, oh, it's an automatic divorce. No, people separate and they can come right back together and, and continue on like nothing happened. Sometimes you just need that time to be an individual because you spend so much time being a unit that you kind of lose yourself in the relationship. So sometimes you just need to be an individual and you need to just go off and see what else is out there. Not necessarily saying dating, but just to find you, just to have some me time, you know? So I get where Tammy is coming from and I get where Deb is coming from. And this was a really sad, it was a real sad scene to watch. But for what I'm seeing online, Tammy Walker, they doing all right. So I'm rooting for them. They one of my favorite couples. But that was the end of episode 14. Hope you guys enjoyed my review. Remember, like, comment, subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. And I'll see you guys next episode. Or video. <laughs> Later.